Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Chicago Scholars Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Just a few housekeeping items before we do get started. There's a Q&A button located at the bottom of your screen, which you can use to ask questions to our presenters at any time. If you do have a question for a specific college, be sure to mention that college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is also just one of many sessions happening. After this, there'll be an additional hour that you guys can go and check out more colleges as well. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now, without further ado, I'll turn it over to our first presenter, which is Columbia University, located in the city of New York. Thank you so much, Clarissa. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Afia Johnson Thornton, Assistant Director at Columbia University in the city of New York. Um, we're going to breeze through a few of these slides with you today. Uh, so on this first slide, you'll see Columbia University. Uh, this is Low Library. It's kind of the focal point of campus life. And then you'll see a uh, college walk just in front of you. Students will hang out on those steps, have lunch. Uh, and there are a variety of different events that happen um, just in the center of campus there. And you'll see the way that it kind of beautifully looks over the rest of New York City. Uh, we are located in Morningside Heights, which is a neighborhood in Harlem, just located in Upper Manhattan. So for those of you who may not be familiar with New York City, Manhattan is one of the five boroughs. We are an island. The part that folks know most about is kind of Midtown area, a little bit around Chelsea. Um, and that's a little bit further south of us. It's about 20 minutes south on the train, um, but it's still a very residential area. Um, so about 6,000 undergraduates live on our uh, Morningside Heights campus, which is a 36 acre residential campus. And you actually have guaranteed housing for all four years, which is a pretty big deal for a school in New York City. And we're pretty proud of that. In terms of our student community, about 18% of our students self-identify as first-generation students, more than 50% identify as students of color, uh, with over 50 states, or all 50 states rather, represented in over 110 countries. 12% uh, of our students are uh, sole foreign passport holders as well. And so that kind of speaks to the diversity uh, represented on our campus. In terms of the academic community, we split the community between Columbia College and the School of Engineering. Columbia College is where you would find your home if you're interested in any of the fields of study mentioned here. So humanities, natural sciences, social sciences, languages and cultures, visual and performing arts. There are over 80 different majors within those five categories that you can pursue. Within the School of Engineering, which is about uh, where about 1,500 of our students are, um, whereas there are about 4,500 4, students in Columbia College, in the School of Engineering, um, we do also pride ourselves on the connection that folks build between engineering and um, kind of the broader world and the humanities and other fields of study. And so within the School of Engineering, there are just about 15 uh, majors represented there. Uh, and so there is still a diversity of experiences you could have within the School of Engineering. And as I mentioned, we're borrowing from the humanities in a variety of places. And so the core curriculum becomes a huge part of who we are. The core curriculum is our approach to a liberal arts education. There are other ways that schools can go about a liberal arts education. You might be familiar with open curriculums or schools that have some general requirements. Columbia is on the other end of that spectrum in the sense that we have the core curriculum that essentially asks every Columbia student to complete the same set of courses along with some electives and of course the major that they're pursuing. And so regardless of the field of study you pursue within your major, you're still getting this really wonderful broad set of knowledge that you can apply anywhere. Uh, and that set of knowledge um, is related to literature, philosophy, writing, art, music, the sciences, global cultures, languages, and wellness. And so within Columbia College, that takes up about a third of the classes you'll take. And within the School of Engineering, that takes up about a fourth of the classes you'll take. As you can see, there's still ample opportunity for you to explore beyond the core and beyond your major, but this is our way of ensuring that our students are global citizens um, and well-versed in all there could be beyond exactly what they're studying. As I mentioned, we're in the heart of New York City. About 95% of our students have at least one internship during their undergraduate experience. We have these lovely parks, some of which you might be familiar with, like Central Park, not too far from our gates. 
And we really do want you to engage with New York City in all the ways possible. And so we offer free and discounted tickets for events throughout New York City for all four years that you're here. And thinking about the community on campus, despite the fact that we're in the city, I think we still have a really strong sense of community. Um, our folks live on campus, as I mentioned, 95% of our students live on campus for all four years. And so it really does become your home. There are over 500 organizations on campus, 31 Division I varsity sports. We do compete within the Ivy League Athletic Conference, which for those of you who are thinking about schools within the Ivy League, it's great to remember that the Ivy League is actually just an athletic conference. That's all we are, a group of schools that play each other in sports. In terms of the uh, kind of element of affording this institution, we do have uh, the unfortunate title of being pretty expensive, um, but we like to create affordability within that. And so um, there are no loans within your financial aid package. We meet 100% of your family's demonstrated need through the use of grants, again, not loans, um, and we meet quite a bit of aid. Um, as I mentioned, there are other ways in which we approach affordability, free entry to 30 plus New York City museums, free and discounted Broadway tickets, free laundry in residence halls, which might not sound like much right now, but is actually a pretty big deal when you go to college. Um, hundreds of work study positions. Um, and again, affordability does not end with your aid letter. And thinking about the application review process, we do utilize a holistic review. Some of those pieces mentioned here, I do wanna highlight at the bottom that we are waiving standardized testing um, for the second year in a row due to COVID-19 um, and the uh, decreased availability of testing. And then finally, when it comes to deadlines, we do have early decision and regular. We take the three applications located on your screen here, November 1 and January 1 are our early decision and regular decision deadlines. And if you wanna get in touch with us, you can do so here. Thank you so much. Thank you for that presentation, Columbia University. Up next, we have Hope College. All righty. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Anjali Gaddy, and my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a 2017 grad of Hope College. So I'm a regional rep in the Chicagoland area and also Southern Illinois. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right. So uh, Hope College is a small faith-based liberal arts institution. Uh, we have just over 3,000 students um, and also lo located in the Lakeshore city of Holland, Michigan. Holland is about two and a half to three hours uh, a drive from Chicagoland area. We also have an Amtrak on campus for students who uh, are close to that. And as you can see on the map, we are in West Michigan, um, about 10 minute drive from Lake Michigan and just a block away from our downtown Holland, which is a quaint downtown on 8th Street. And a frequent stop for Hope students is uh, to shop around, grab coffee, or see a movie. You can see some students right here out in front of Kilwins and the Peanut Store. Um, also moving back over to campus, uh, let's talk academics a little bit. So Hope equips students with a liberal arts education. Um, this provides students with a wide breadth of academics um, while also giving um, you deep, deep studies into your uh, area of study that you so choose. So we offer small classes. Um, we have a student to faculty ratio of 12 to one. And, and here professors, they want to get to know you. Um, we also don't leave it there. So it's not up to you to figure everything out. Um, when you're on campus, you have the help of a strong advising program, uh, our Center for a Career and Calling, um, academic, our Academic Success Center, and also other resources that are free to you. And also our relational faculty um, will give you all the support you need um, in discerning your path. And though we're a smaller institution, uh, we offer a wide variety of majors covering the arts, humanities, natural and applied sciences and social sciences as well. So with over 90 majors and minors available to our students, our most popular, uh, you're looking at education, business, engineering, nursing, and our pre-health programs. So we also love the arts and are nationally accredited in our, and we are nationally accredited in each of our, um, each of our categories of dance, art, music, and theater. So amongst our peers, we're ranked top 20 in institutional research 
and we're proud to give students the opportunity to do hands-on research with professors from the very first day and uh, you're able to actually present your research at our celebration of undergraduate research. So also, you know, it's not always about academics, right? So we can tap into a little bit of student life at HOPE. So outside of the classroom, HOPE students are very involved. Um, this is looking like student organizations, IMs, service opportunities, and a whole lot more. So we have over 80 plus, you know, student organizations that cover the gamut with interests at Greek life, Outdoor Adventure Club, multicultural student organizations. Um, I was personally part of Black Student Union. And also we do have the Do Crew. So the Do Crew is our student section. And for our 22 uh, Division Three athletics on HOPE's campus, um, our Do Crew is our student section. HOPE fans love them. Um, and they really go hard for a lot of our sports. So um, this is why our men's and women's basketball teams are I have been the leaders in Division Three sports with attendance records. Um, also, some hope traditions we have that run deep into our history is like the pull. Um, this is the longest collegiate tradition in the nation over where freshmen and sophomores compete in a giant, intense tug of war. So uh, it's three hours long. It sounds really crazy, but this is one of those things that keeps happening year over year. All right. And moving on, as you know, we are a faith-based institution. So, and it's not just, uh, you know, about being personal in your faith, but also it is a community. And it's not an obligation, but rather an opportunity for our students. So, for example, our chapel services are held three times a week. We don't have anything scheduled at that time. Uh, but it is a chance for our students to come together if they so choose. And uh, clearly they choose a lot. It's standing room only pretty much every time, which is kind of weird to think about in the state of our world. But once we get back there, it'll feel like home for us. And also our students have the ability to attend chapel, join small groups, and also go on immersion trips, which are week-long spring break trips where they do uh, a lot of awesome service in um, communities across the world. So here's how you can move forward with learning more about HOPE. Um, for our rising seniors, we are test optional. It's free to apply, and you can apply using the Comet app or our HOPE application straight from our website. Um, we currently have on-campus and virtual visits. Um, you can visit at hope.edu slash visit or to see even more of our summer offerings, hope.edu slash summer. We'll show you also some of our open houses and we have one more coming up on August 6th. It's a great chance to learn from current students and also hear more about the advising process, how students discern their major, what they're involved in in life after HOPE as well. So that's all the time I have for now. Uh, thank you all so much for joining and listening and uh, go Hope. Thank you Hope College for that wonderful presentation. Up next, we have Lake Forest College. Awesome, thank you. I'm so excited to share a little bit more about Lake Forest with you all today. My name is Karina Henderson and I'm an admissions counselor at Lake Forest and I work with students um, throughout Chicago. So Lake Forest, if you're not familiar with us, we're a small private liberal arts college 30 miles north of Chicago in the neighborhood itself of Lake Forest. We normally sit just under 16,000 students or 1,600 students, excuse me, every year um, from almost every single state in the US and almost 100 different countries right now. Um, some of these numbers that you'll see on the screen will change a little bit because we haven't adjusted for the incoming class that we're going to have in the fall. Um, but for the most part, we usually have just about half of our students are coming from outside of Illinois. Um, and even within Illinois, we have students coming from all over the state. So not just Chicago and some of the suburbs of Chicago. When I think about Lake Forest, there really are four main aspects of the Lake Forest experience that um, stand out to me as a staff member. It's our pragmatic liberal arts education, our career preparation, our location, and then our values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we'll go ahead and go over some of that today. With our pragmatic approach to liberal arts education, um, just like any other liberal arts college, we are a college that encourages students to take classes within their major, outside of their major. So if you're interested in the sciences, but you're also interested in the humanities, then a liberal arts college is great for you. At Lake Forest specifically, all of our students complete an experiential learning requirement that really um, uh, focuses on that pragmatic approach. So that can be through internships, 
academic research, study abroad programs, or even some study away programs that we have in the South Loop of Chicago. So because we're near a larger city, we do have the opportunity to share so many internships um, with our students. And our students can actually complete up to three internships that count as a credit needed in order to graduate. So it's well um, integrated into your curriculum at Lake Forest. We have the Career Advancement Center, um, which houses 11 professional staff members that connect with our students really from day one to provide advising um, based on whatever career pathway you end up in. So all of our students join a pathway. For example, if you know you want to be a doctor, you would be part of our healthcare pathway. And your, or your career advisor um, specifically works with students interested in the sciences and in healthcare. So they know exactly how to support you based on what your career interests are, um, as well as going to medical school, law school, any kind of advanced degree beyond undergrad. There are also plenty of events that the Career Advancement Center hosts so that you can get engaged beyond just connecting with your advisor. When you're at Lake Forest, you really have the opportunity to make a combination of majors and minors. So as I mentioned before, since it's a liberal arts college, we're very interdisciplinary in the way that we approach our academics. You can have two majors and one minor, um, you can have one major or two minors. There really is a lot for you to explore. Um, and you have until the end of your sophomore year to decide. So you do have a good chunk of time to figure that out. And we also have a self-design major. So if you're looking at Lake Forest and you realize, you know, we don't have the major that you're interested in, you can design it. And then as I mentioned, our location, being close to Chicago, um, we're about a 10 minute walk from the Metro, if you're familiar with that, which is an hour long train ride if you get into the city. And professors and staff members oftentimes take students basically on field trips into the city. Um, as you know, plenty of students are connected with internships and career opportunities in the city. Um, and then, as I mentioned, that residential program that we have. And then the final point that I mentioned was diversity, equity, and inclusion. At Lake Forest, 14% of our students are international students and 31% are domestic students of color. And we have plenty of built-in support systems for our students regardless of their backgrounds. So that can be through the Office of Intercultural Relations, which provides diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives for the whole entire campus, as well as first-generation college student support and multicultural student organizations. You have the Health and Wellness Center, which provides support for your mental and physical health. And then you also have the Center for Academic Success, which provides tutoring for students, as well as providing um, learning accommodations. So perhaps if you've had a IEP in high school and you want to bring that over to your experience at Lake Forest, there are a lot of different ways that you can get that support. Because um, when you go to a liberal arts college like Lake Forest, it's about the holistic self and making sure that everything about you as a person, as a student is cultivated um, and is able to be supported and, and you'll be able to have that growth in your four years at our college. Um, and then, of course, you also want to take into consideration extracurricular activities. So at Lake Forest, we have over 80 student clubs and organizations to be a part of. More than half of our students participate in some kind of athletics. We are a Division III institution with 25 varsity sports. And then we have many campus events that go on in person in a quote unquote normal year, as well as virtual events that students, both prospective students and current students can participate in um, as well. And then as you're applying to Lake Forest, um, one important thing to note is that with financial aid, all of our students are considered for up to $32,000 in merit-based scholarships. We are test optional, so you don't have to submit a test score if you don't want to. This chart is on our website and can be a really good way to determine if you want to submit a test score. And we also offer a $2,000 visit grant for students who come onto campus and visit. And we do have campus tours available for our students. Um, but that visit grant can also be included for students who participate in a virtual event like this one, in case you aren't able to come onto campus. Because we know um, there's been a lot going on in the world, so it's okay if you aren't able to actually visit. If you want to learn more, you can schedule either an in-person visit or a virtual visit on our website at lakeforest.edu slash visit. And you can also participate in a virtual tour on your own time if you'd like. And then I will share my contact information in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions and I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thank you Lake Forest for that wonderful presentation. 
As a reminder for our participants, if you guys do have questions for any of the presenters today, definitely don't hesitate to drop those into the Q&A down below. Up next, we have University of St. Thomas. Hello all, um, thank you so much for being with us this evening. My name is Elise DeWald. I am a senior admissions counselor at the University of St. Thomas and we're just gonna jump right into it. So uh, St. Thomas is home to 10,000 total students, but we have 6,000 of those students as undergraduate students who reside on our St. Paul campus, which is in the photo right on the left. And then um, our graduate students um, will be uh, mostly on our Minneapolis campus as well. Um, I love uh, working at the St. Paul campus. Um, I should mention that 6,000 of those students um, who are undergraduate um, are the ones who are attending there. Um, I find that St. Paul is just a very charming um, city that has a lot going on. You'll never see any shortage of bulletin boards with advertisements for students seeking roommates, ways to get involved in the community, um, uh, anyone seeking any local music, lots of locally owned coffee shops, bookstores, um, family owned restaurants and all of that stuff. Uh, but still we are very close to a major metropolitan downtown with Minneapolis. Our students can commute to and from St. Paul um, and Minneapolis for free at no cost through our Tommy shuttle. Um, you'll also see we have a third campus listed as well. Um, unfortunately, we cannot provide free transportation to our Bernardi campus in Rome, um, but it is a very popular place for our students to uh, take advantage of studying abroad if they choose. Uh, my colleagues have spoken really well about the liberal arts uh, component, so I won't um, just follow up their good work by describing too much of what that is, but because St. Thomas shares a lot of that. Um, but uh, as far as our curriculum goes, we have our liberal arts core curriculum, which comes out to be about a third of the classes that all students will take. Um, with our, again, enrollment size being around 6,000, we seek to also provide very personal attention while also providing a lot of resources. So we seek to be uh, one of the biggest small schools out there. And I think that can show uh, through all of the majors and minors that we offer and all the opportunities to get involved in some of our unique majors listed right there, uh, including actuarial science, which is like statistics, um, as well as entrepreneurship and data analytics Usually those are fields that tend to be um, available only for like after your four years in undergraduate, but our St. Thomas students get the chance to pursue them earlier in their careers. Um, should also mention that coming soon we have a nursing major. Um, and so all the seniors on this call today will have the chance to be um, one of the, some of the students in our very first nursing major. So very excited about that. Um, so as far as student involvement goes, I um, should mention that we do have a two-year residency requirement, which we think is a great opportunity for students to form community, um, run into their classmates outside of the classroom, um, see them in their residence halls, see them on the athletic fields, um, just around campus. Again, it's the type of size where you're going to recognize familiar faces as you're going from point A to point B. Um, but every time uh, the new semester comes around, you'll see a new face um, or a few new faces in your classrooms as well. Clubs are a very popular way for students to get involved on campus. Um, that second point listed there, STAR, uh, the St. Thomas Activities and Recreation Club, uh, handles a lot of um, after, light, after dark events at St. Thomas, including movies out on the football field, which is highlighted in that top left photo. Uh, they also host something called Thursday Night Live, where they bring in local artists um, and also like the mystery bus, which um, I actually just learned about this the other day where students will uh, sign up, they'll hop on the bus, and then they will go to anywhere within the Twin Cities, um, which uh, they don't know about until that moment. Uh, recently, we have made the decision to go from Division Three to Division One. We are the uh, first school in the NCAA's modern history to shift from Division Three to Division One. Um, so we're very excited to see um, what our athletics teams can do now on a more national stage. And then lastly, uh, FAITH, um, since we are a Catholic-affiliated institution, makes up a lot of our student clubs and organizations. 
Uh, you do not have to be Catholic to attend. Um, I love what Angelique said earlier in the presentation that our faith aspect is an opportunity, not an obligation. And I'd say that we do very much the same thing here at St. Thomas. Um, I'll just pause and touch on the admissions timeline very briefly. Um, we have um, our St. Thomas application, which is available online. Um, we also will utilize the common application. Um, so feel free to do whichever option is best for you. All students are automatically considered for our merit awards, uh, which range from 12 to uh, $36,000 renewable over four years. And uh, we are also a test optional school as well. If you like what you hear today, we'd love to see you either virtually or in person. Here are a couple visit options that we have. And if you would like to schedule a visit, feel free to um, call that number or I will put my, my personal information in the chat. And I think that's it. Thank you very much, University of St. Thomas. Up next, we have University of Dayton. Thank you so much. Let me get my screen here. Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm going to be the one that doesn't work. All right, guys. Hold on one second. I think I just hit the wrong button. Okie dokie. There we go. I did. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, good evening. My name is Erin Sarush. I am the Regional Enrollment Manager uh, based here in the Chicago area for the University of Dayton. I'm actually one of two Regional Enrollment Managers um, that you may work with. My colleague Amy Hayes is also based here. She's not on the call this evening, but um, just wanted you to be aware that she's uh, there for you as well. Um, we are the University of Dayton. We're located in Dayton, Ohio. Um, Dayton is very well known for their neighborhoods, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit, much like the city of Chicago. So we do find that our Chicago area students find um, the University of Dayton to very much feel like home because of that neighborhood feel, and I'll get into that shortly. So at the University of Dayton, we are a top-tier Catholic Marianist research university committed to educating each student as a whole person. Uh, this means we empower students to learn, lead, and serve so our graduates can lead fulfilling lives and make a difference in the world. We are a true mid-sized campus with about 8,000 undergraduates living on our campus. Um, total population with our graduate students is right around 11,000. Students do come from about 40 states um, and in a more normal year when everybody can travel about 60 countries. So you will have the opportunity to meet students from nearly the entire country as well as world. Um, just over 50% uh, are from out of state. The Chicago area is actually our largest um, population of students outside of Ohio, which is part of why myself and Amy are based here. Um, so a really strong out of state population, which I think is important for students to be aware of. And about 20% um, of the student body does um, report to be from a historically underrepresented community. So um, we're, we're really proud of some of those numbers. Um, our average class size is about 27 with a 14 to one student teacher ratio. Um, so you're still going to have small class sizes and really have great opportunities to get to know faculty. As a top tier university, our programs and facilities are recognized among the best in the nation. So no matter what major you choose, the educational philosophy will be the same. We provide a challenging curriculum in the classroom paired with hands-on real world applied learning opportunities in a supportive environment. So you're going to have really great hands-on learning opportunities through um, research. We are a top tier research university. Um, we have state-of-the-art facilities, um, great hands-on experiences through the business school with Flyer Enterprises. They run 10 small businesses on our campus. So some really great opportunities there. Um, we do offer about 80 major, 80 academic programs in four schools, as you can see listed there. We're probably most well-known for engineering business um, and the uh, School of Education. We've recently added a nursing program and all of our programs are direct admit, so you can pursue what really interests you. Um, if you're undecided or uncertain or of multiple interests, 
Uh, we do offer our Discover program, which allows students to come in essentially undecided and have some time to work with an academic advisor on what it is they exactly would like to do. Discover Arts is our most general undecided program, and then we do have a Discover program in each school as well. Um, so giving back and learning how to build a community are essential parts of the UD experience, and our student, students take the concept of community really seriously because UD isn't just a school, it's gonna be your home. One way we show our commitment to community is through our campus housing. Nearly 85% of students choose to live on campus all four years, whether in a residence hall or in one of our unique student neighborhoods. So the University of Dayton does own about 400 houses on campus. So as a third and fourth year student, you have the option to live in those houses, um, live with your friends, next door to friends, across the street from friends, but you're not dealing with landlords and paying utilities. You pay the university housing costs to live there, um, and really have a really unique, fun experience where you're on campus with your friends. Um, it makes for a really great active community. And because our students live side by side in community, our campus transforms into more than just a place to live. Our housing is an intentional effort to build a learning living community, which prepares students for a lifetime of leadership and service in their own communities. And they definitely have fun. There's no shortage of fun to be had um, in the student neighborhoods and on our campus. Uh, no matter what you're interested in, we're also ready to help you craft your own extracurricular experience at UD. We offer more than 270 student organizations, groups focused on academics, faith, recreation, service, and social action, which means you're sure to find something that matches your talents and interests. Um, our campus ministry department is, is one of the largest on a college campus. They do serve students of all faith backgrounds. A variety of community service opportunities are available. Just about 50% of the student body reports to be Catholic. Um, so we do have students of all faith backgrounds on the campus as well. Also our multi-ethnic education and engagement center works with all of our students um, and families to really um, work on service and social justice activities, diversity and inclusion activities, um, and all students are really encouraged to get involved with MEC as well. More than half of our students are involved in club or intramural sports and fans of our Division I Flyers have been named among the best in the nation. Um, really well known for basketball too. Um, I'm gonna jump ahead because there's a little more I wanna say. Um, so we, um, for our um, tuition costs, we do freeze our net tuition over four years. So you won't see a tuition increase. If you visit campus or engage with us, including this activity and complete the FAFSA in your senior year, you'll receive a textbook scholarship um, for $4,000 and we have no fees. So no lab fees, application fees, graduation fees, none of those. You can see our applications there. It's free to apply. We are um, test optional as well. Um, so please do not feel obligated to send test scores for any program. November 1, early action. If you're applying for nursing, you must apply by November 1st. Um, we hope you'll come visit us. We are open for visitors. We will be having in-person open houses this fall as well as in-person classes, which we're really thrilled about. Um, I'll drop my info in the, in the chat um, and I apologize for the <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation, University of Dayton. Our final institution for this session is Marquette University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeanette Von Hayden. I am here from Marquette University, located up in the great city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, the picture that you're seeing on screen is our campus right on Wisconsin Avenue. And although it's quiet in this picture, it definitely will not be quiet in the next 16 hours as the city of Milwaukee is celebrating that NBA championship with the Milwaukee Bucks. So it's a really exciting time to be a part of the great city of champions. So Marquette, if you're not familiar, is a Catholic Jesuit university located right in the heart of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We are very much an urban campus and we thrive off of those connections within the city. We are also a perfectly medium sized school. So although Milwaukee is a larger city in the Midwest, we still have all the benefits of being a medium sized campus. Our undergraduate class size is right around uh, 8,500 undergrad students. When you add in students who are pursuing doctorate degrees or pursuing their masters, we have just over 11,000. And those numbers are our sweet spots. We really don't wanna grow much more because those numbers allow us a lot of different opportunities and allow our students opportunities, which is the more important piece of the puzzle. 
our average class size is right around 23 students. Uh, so while you may have some larger lecture halls, we will always break it into smaller class sections. So you're getting to engage with other students to really help develop that Marquette community and classroom community, but also so you can begin connecting with some of your faculty members. All of our faculty are here with the intention of undergraduate teaching. Um, on the side, they do have research and they do maintain some of those professional connections, but their number one priority is to share their expertise and their knowledge with our undergraduate students to really help enrich that experience. Our students study in a variety of fields. We have over 80 undergraduate majors housed in seven colleges. All of our programs are direct entry, which means when you apply to us, you'll be able to start in that curriculum from day one, get on that four year graduation path, really help affirm if this is the path for you. Now, if you're a little undecided, or as I like to say, multi-interested, because uh, it's not that you're undecided about your future, but how do you just pick one major uh, in one interest, uh, you can start undecided into any of our academic colleges, except the College of Nursing, which only has one undergrad degree, and that's a BSN program. Other popular options at Marquette, including nursing, include an accelerated path for physical therapy, athletic training, physician assistant studies, uh, a full college of business, college of engineering, and so much more. There's really a lot for you to help engage and choose what is going to be the academic path for you. In terms of involvement, we have a ton of opportunities right on our campus with over 325 clubs and organizations, ranging from religious organizations to student government. Um, we have a ton of study abroad experiences and international education opportunities. There's also some um, kind of hybrid programs where you'll study abroad, but maybe you're staying in the US. For example, our Less Aspen program, where you're gonna go to Washington DC and you're gonna spend a semester both interning somewhere in the capital, but also uh, taking classes alongside students from other universities. And so that Less Aspen program is something that's really exciting for students maybe interested in political science or are interested in digital media and wanting to go into some of those national news outlets. One of the really important pieces of the puzzle about who Marquette is, is our Jesuit identity. If you're not familiar with the Jesuits, no panic. Um, we are, uh, the Jesuits are an order of Catholic priests rooted in, rooted in access to education. Really what that means for you is kind of multifaceted or two-faceted. The first is in terms of service. Service is huge on our campus. Uh, we don't require students to complete service, but it is one of the number one involvements at Marquette. With our students completing over half a million hours of volunteer work each year, whether that's through service learning tied to a certain class that you're enrolled in um, or service outside of the classroom. The other way that you'll see it is in terms of our liberal arts and core education. This is a series of 10 classes um, that you will take alongside of your major specific coursework. The other big piece about who we are as the city of Milwaukee, a lot of fun happening right now, as I mentioned, with the Bucks winning that NBA championship. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities for our students to engage and get connected within the city of Milwaukee. There are seven Fortune 500 companies headquartered out of little old Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, including companies like Harley Davidson, Kohl's Corporation, Rockwell Automation, which are all um, top intern providers, internship providers for our students, regardless of their major. These experiences are really important to whatever career path you end up going down. And because of our medium size, it's really incredibly accessible for our students, whether that's getting connected with your advisors and having them point out different internship opportunities within the city or the city of Chicago, um, whether that is getting involved in taking on leadership roles within student organizations. There's a million and one things for you to enrich your academic experience. This is my contact info and I want to make sure that you were provided it because as rising seniors, um, I am going to be your point person. I am a Chicago based regional counselor here to help answer any questions that are coming up in your college search process. As far as the application for Marquette University goes, uh, our application will open on August 1st, either through Marquette or through the Common App. There is no application fee to apply to Marquette, and we are also test optional. This is actually our third uh, year being a test optional institution, and is something that we are really dedicated to, allowing students to decide how to best represent yourself in the admissions process. The only pieces that are required to apply, of course, your application, your essay, and your high school transcript. 
One important piece of the puzzle when we're reviewing applications is that because we're direct entry, our review process means that we're going to look at specifically what experiences you've had that have prepared you for your career path. So if you're interested in engineering, what are your math and science curriculum and grades looking like? Where have you really pushed yourself? How have the activities and involvements you've participated in helped inform and um, prepared you for that career path? Now we are um, on a, a pooled admissions review, which means our application deadline is December 1st. So you must apply by December 1st in order to receive full consideration for scholarship and admission. We will still accept applications post December 1, but it is important to make sure that you're applying by December 1 for some of our competitive admission programs like physical therapy, speech pathology, nursing, engineering, and business, as those programs and colleges do tend to fill up. So make sure you apply. As far as financial aid goes, it comes in three waves. We offer merit aid through an automatic Pear Marquette scholarship that's good for four years. We also have need-based aid that you can apply for through the FAFSA. And then the third wave is our scholars and scholarship application. So make sure that you are applying to Marquette early to give yourself enough time to make that decision by May 1st. But we are open for campus tours, so I would encourage you to come up to Milwaukee Maybe not tomorrow because traffic's going to be insane, but there's going to be a lot of opportunities for you over the next year, including our very first uh, full open house post COVID on August 6th that we are still accepting. So thanks so much and I hope to hear from you. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon, um, maybe evening, depending on where you are. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. Also, this is just one of many sessions happening. There's an additional hour up next, so definitely go check that out. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.